Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.0 and DECA Ironworks Simulations JF17 Thunder Module. Welcome to bonus video number 2, LD10 SPI Trick, SPI standing for Sensor Point of Interest. Now consider this one a little bit of a viewer submitted uh, set of tips and tricks. This comes courtesy of the Eagle Dynamics forum user called Kiwi Spirits. He got in touch with me uh, because there'd been quite a bit of discussion in the forums about the ineffectiveness of the LD-10 missile on the JF-17. It's supposed to be roughly similar to the Harm, the uh, AGM-88, uh, but a lot of people were complaining that they were getting quite poor performance out of it. Now, it should be capable of at least something like 60 nautical miles range when launched in the active or pre-planned mode, but a lot of people were finding that they were getting much, much shorter ranges. Uh, and I think most of these experiences people were having were people releasing it in passive or self-protection modes. Now you should note that in passive and self-protection modes, uh, the missile doesn't loft. Uh, because it doesn't know the range to the target, it simply points itself directly at the radar emissions that it's detecting, and it flies a straight path from the aircraft to those emissions. That being the case, the best range that you can really expect in passive and self-protection modes is about 20 nautical miles, with actually many shots only being effective at 15. And uh, these are using a kind of standard launch profile, which would be uh, 35,000 feet and Mach 0.7. So, what do you do to get the most out of it? Well, that's exactly what we're going to follow today, and uh, these uh, tips and tricks come directly from Kiwi Spirits, as I said, in the Eagle Dynamics forums. I've tested this a little bit, and I've had really good results from it. So, let me set the scene. For today's uh, mission, we're carrying the KG-600 self-protection jammer on the center line. This is a requirement to make use of this method. Uh, I'm also carrying two 110, sorry, 1,100 litre tanks uh, on the inner wing pylons. On the outer wing pylons, I've got uh, double rails for LD-10s for a total of four LD-10 missiles. And on my wingtips, I've got self-protection PL-5E2 heat seeker missiles, just in case someone decides to come and bother me. Also got a full cannon loadout here today. So what can we do? Uh, active mode for the LD-10 is so much more effective that we should always try to use it. However, that requires a sensor point of interest or uh, a waypoint. We basically need to know the exact or almost exact location of the emitter. So how can we do this if we don't already know where the emitter is? Well, that's where Kiwi Spirit's uh, advice comes in. Let's uh, jump into the cockpit. I'm gonna bring the aircraft out of pause. I'm now in active pause. And uh, what we want to do is we want to make use of the HSD in order to roughly figure out where the enemy radar is. Now, I have an SA-15 and an SA-10 site uh, along this kind of skinny part of Cyprus. And as of right now, they're probably not even showing up. And with the self-protection jammer powered off, which it currently is, we just get standard RWR indications here and the icons are positioned based on uh, them being in non-lethal or lethal uh, priorities, basically, and that will vary based on the radar type. However, if we actually turn on the self-protection jammer, we then start to get actual ranges to the targets because the self-protection jammer does some additional processing. So let's uh, let's get set up and, uh, and uh, demonstrate exactly how this could work. I'm currently at 30,000 feet. I'm gonna go into burner and I'm gonna climb up to 40,000 feet because I want to be going nice and high and nice and fast in order to demonstrate this as well as possible. And during the climb, I'm gonna show you all how to get set up. So if I look down at my push buttons here for power, uh, avionics power, uh, you can see in combat mode by default, the self-protection jammer is not on. Let's go ahead and power on the SPJ and we can now see on the left-hand multifunction display here in the SMS page, uh, the self-protection jammer is currently in bit, 
Uh, we need the jammer to either be actively jamming or be in standby before it will start updating the information that shows up on the HSD here. There we go, it's now in standby. Now it might take it a little bit of time to analyze the returns that we're getting, uh, but after a bit of a delay, these icons uh, should start appearing with geographic locations on the ground. And there you go, you can see it's doing it now when I zoom out. Uh, you can see exactly where, well, it's probably not exact, but you can see as good as possible where these emitters are actually positioned. Uh, my emitters that I'm interested in are not showing up here just yet though. Next step, we're gonna pop the aircraft into air to ground master mode. And uh, with that, I now get the radar in the center MFD, and that's an important part of this. We're going to use the radar to position our SPI and try to co-locate it with the icon that appears on the HSD. And to go into air-to-ground master mode, it's the T1 switch. I pulled it aft, and that puts me into air-to-ground master. Uh, we now need to make sure our LD10s are powered on. Let's, uh, let's do that quickly. They're currently showing as powered off. Oh, they won't come on because we're not in master mode on. Okay, master arm on, sorry. So, master arm on. Press here, and they're going through their power-up cycle. We'll have those missiles ready in just a moment. And by default, they're in the active mode. You can see here that we've got modes for active, passive, and self-protection. We're going to use active mode today, which requires either uh, a waypoint or a sensor point of interest. We're getting up nice and high now, but we still haven't got any emissions from these radars yet. I'm going to wait for their symbols to appear. Um, it's an SA-10 and an SA-15 down there, by the way. And uh, let's put uh, the combat display up here for now, because then we'll see the status of the, the jammer, although I'm not going to actually use it. Okay. So all the way up at Angels 40 and flying, you know, around about Mach 0.75, uh, we should get the best possible range out of these missiles. And the, the great thing is, in the active mode, the LD-10 does loft, and it lofts a lot, as you're going to see. Uh, and because of that, it gets quite a fantastic range. Uh, it almost comes down directly from above on these radars when we engage them like this. Oh, and I need to bump out the range of my air-to-ground radar, so we'll actually be able to see <laughs> this location. Uh, and I'm going to make the radar my sensor of interest. I can do that by pushing the sensor one switch aft. Uh, and now that I've done that... Oh, no, aft again. Yeah, first push of aft puts it to HUD. Second push puts it to the center display. You can now see I've got control of my radar crosshairs. Uh, that's us. We're going to level off in just a moment at Angels 40. And then continue inbound. Okay, autopilot off. Let's start bringing that nose down a little. Yeah, we're starting to fly quite close to the, the limits of what the aircraft can do. Let's go autopilot and altitude hold here. This is close enough to 40k. And I'm going to let the aircraft accelerate so we're not flying so... Um, kind of so behind the power curve. So, uh, let's uh, continue inbound. We should eventually get something on the RWR along here. Uh, and I can actually, I can already demonstrate how this is going to look. Uh, I'm going to put the radar crosshairs over that part of Cypress and depress the TDC. Uh, and just, uh, again, a quick reminder, T5 is your TDC. Depress now. You can see that I've got the diamond showing on the radar and a corresponding diamond on the HSD. And this is going to be our little trick. Uh, we're going to basically co-locate these. So, I'm going to continue inbound. Uh, you guys can rejoin me once I've got symbology on the RWR. Okay, you rejoin me. I just got the FA symbol show up on the RWR. If we give it a few moments, uh, the, the self-protection jammer should do some analysis. There you go, it's repositioning it. It's detected a second FA. Uh, these are our two search radars that we're interested in here. So I'm going to give it a little bit more time to do some processing and it should bring these into the correct locations and we can then begin placing a SPI on them. There we go. Oh, actually the first one was just about right. So uh, for the first launch, let's go ahead and start walking this in. Uh, I'm going to zoom down so that we get a good display here. So I can see that I want to go down and to the left slightly, down a bit more, and that's pretty much bang on target for the closer one. So, uh, LD-10 in active mode, we get confirmation of the range here up, up on the HUD, we're at about 50 nautical miles. Magnum, first one's away. 
And you can see there, it goes for a nice big loft. That's uh, that's going to get as much energy as it can, and it's flying off towards the first radar site. Okay, let's get better information on the location of the second site. I don't think that icon is quite correct yet, uh, so I'll give it a bit more time. We, of course, don't need to be massively accurate, because once we get in a bit closer, the, uh, the LD-10's own sensor will take over. So let's just walk this one on. It looks like it's somewhere about here, but I kind of don't believe it, to be honest. I don't think that's where it is. But anyway, let's go for a second launch. Magnum again. And uh, let's take a little look at the first missile. This one is now, you can see it went all the way up to about Angel's 80 uh, in order to loft as nicely as possible. Can we see our own aircraft? No, we should be down there somewhere. It's already starting to come down. If we take a look at the F-10 view here, uh, SAM site is somewhere here. I don't exactly know where. LD-10 is already uh, on its way. There's my second one. That's probably just finished its, uh, its loft. And down we're coming, and you're going to see that this is going to be quite a steep angle. I'll cut back to my aircraft anyway and just see how the uh, symbols are matching up. That's actually pretty good. That speed is pretty close on. Let's go back to our missile. Let's accelerate time and see if we get ourselves a good hit here. Back to real time, it's getting close. It will have engaged its own sensor by now, so it knows exactly where that radar is. Now, some of these missile systems will try to shoot down the LD-10. Uh, this one hasn't. It looks like it's going to be a direct hit. Boom! It wasn't directly on target, but I think we got him. Second missile now coming down. Uh, I'm just going to jump back here. There are still uh, active sites here, so let's um, let's go ahead and drop this lock. I've actually forgotten how to drop locks. Oh no, I've forgotten how to drop the lock in the uh, in the uh, in the JF-17. That is unfortunate because I can't currently move my cursor. There is a drop lock command, and I've forgotten it. <laughs> anyway, second missile's coming down. Let's see if this one's successful. I don't feel like this one's seen the radar. So this one may well miss. But in any case, the first one was very successful. Oh no, actually, wait, what do we got here? What do we got? It looks like it's found something. This is actually not the radar I was intending it to attack, but it's found another one. And that's obviously where the symbol was. That is a direct hit. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, and we have a missile launch. We're actually being engaged right now. We're probably going to die here. But in any case, that is a demonstration of how this works. Uh, the only thing I need to work out is how do I unlock? It might even be the case that they've changed this since the last time I flew the aircraft, because uh, a lot of these controls have have changed. Yeah, S1 press. That's for uh, that's uh, return to previous master mode from Dogfight. So that's obviously not the one I want for this. I always thought it was uh, nose wheel steering. But uh, yeah, this has obviously changed. Let's see. Do we have an unlock command? S2 press unlock target. And I actually have that. I have that somewhere. So S2 being the uh, sensor control switch. So I do, in fact, already have that. So, sensor 2 here, uh, button 8 and point of view down. Yeah, so it's that one. Okay, found it. So, S2 switch to press, breaks the lock, and we could now walk this on to one of the other targets. But we're too close now, we'd need to turn, and we're probably about to die. So. We're going to call it there. Uh, you can see just how effective that was. That was a 50 nautical mile uh, launch. If you have a radar system that actually has a greater range, you can make longer range launches than that. Um, I've, I've, I've heard of people doing them at 80 nautical miles for, for radars that have a longer range. So uh, just a quick summary of how that works. You need to have the self-protection jammer installed. You need to have the self-protection uh, jammer either in standby or in jamming mode. It needs to actually be operating. 
and then you walk your Spion using the radar and referencing the HSD, and then you can make a launch of the LD-10 in active mode. And that gives you a far, far greater range launch because the LD-10 is lofting, which is very important for its performance. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, you also have the option of joining Deep Hack's ground crew by pressing the join button underneath this video. Please consider doing that uh, if you have the, the spare cash. Uh, big shout out to the current members of Deep Hack's ground crew. Frantic Stone, Channel Wright, Storm Kambari, Byron Farrow, Leo Netzel, Harish Rajan, Mangash, Pink Floyd, J.R. Walker, Shandro Hedgewald and Griff Nizzle. Thank all of you very, very much for your support, and thank you very much for Kiwi Spirits on the Eagle Dynamics forums for providing this little tip. Talk to you all later. Fly safe. <laughs>